Infection is war. And like war, your body takes it very seriously, training different cell populations for different jobs and missions. When you're infected, the first troop on the job is the neutrophil, also known as the granulocyte. And its mission is very simple. Use chemical warfare to take out as many of the bad guys as you can. Unfortunately, during this process, it can also cause a lot of collateral damage, harming the healthy surrounding tissues and also destroying itself, much like a kamikaze pilot. Now, a healthy body does produce neutrophils at a constant rate, but not very many. So when an infection does come along and these reserves rush into, into action, they're very quickly depleted and your body's left scrambling to train replacements. It does this through a process called emergency granulopoiesis. Interestingly, this process doesn't just produce more neutrophils, but also better, stronger ones that are somehow more resilient so they're able to last longer to give you a better defense. The aim of my research is to decipher these codes and figure out what messages are being sent from the site of infection that tell the rest of your body, hey, we need help, send more neutrophils, and how these instructions somehow improve neutrophil function. Like everything else in your body, these are of course coded for in your DNA. So I'm looking for the specific genes involved and how they are controlled and regulated. All right, why do we care? <laughs> well, we don't know very much about emergency granulopoiesis, but what we do know is that sometimes these messages are confused or intercepted. And would you want to give a kamikaze pilot the wrong directions? <laughs> Take rheumatoid arthritis, for example. In, in people with this disease, their neutrophils are rushing into action, but there's nothing for them to fight, so they're just causing a lot of tissue damage. In other disorders, there is no call for backup, so no neutrophils are produced, and then the people can't protect themselves from dangerous infections. So how do I plan to go, out, go about, finding, about this finding this information? Well, first, well, <laughs> sorry, the easiest way possible, of course, just by looking back and watching it. I know that sounds a little far-fetched. How am I going to watch DNA? Well, this is where the zebrafish comes in. <coughs> I use a zebrafish in my research for a number of reasons. First, when young, it's completely transparent, and second, it's relatively simple to produce a transgenic animal. This means that I can fluorescently label different genes that I think might be involved and watch in real time in a living organism how their expression changes in response to something like an infection. I can then combine this information with drug screens to find different chemicals that can be used to modify these messages at different points during their transmission. In this way, when something does go wrong, we'll have a better idea of where to look and how we might actually fix it. So in this way, the goal of my research is to improve communications within your body so that it only goes to war when it needs to and can fight more effectively when it does.